We are delighted to address you this morning in the third India-Pacific Island Sustainable Development Conference after first having the pleasure of welcoming many of you to Fiji last night. As mentioned last night, our Honorable Prime Minister is making his way back to Fiji after a successful campaign abroad to continue to build support for Fiji's presidency of the United Nations Climate Change and Negotiations, or COP23. He is leading our efforts to prepare for that enormous responsibility as Fiji looks to defend and implement the Paris Agreement on Climate Change and preserve the multilateral consensus for decisive action to address the underlying causes of climate change in Bonn in November this year. We are proud to be leading the world on this issue of the highest importance indeed for the Pacific Island countries also. And we look forward to working with every nation represented at this conference to make our presidency a success. For the Pacific leaders here today, I know that I don't have to explain what is at stake if we falter in our mission to seek full implementation of the Paris Agreement. And I know we all give this issue the serious attention it deserves. This, of course, is not Fiji's presidency alone. It is a presidency that seeks to put the interests of every nation at the forefront of the negotiations, in particular the vulnerable nations. Not only to limit the damage as has been highlighted that has already been done, but to prepare us all for the more extreme impacts of global warming as we know we are headed towards. And to our friends from India, we all look forward to working with you to spur the industrial world into action and dramatically reduce the harmful emissions warming our planet's atmosphere. You've stood shoulder to shoulder with the Pacific many times before, Your Excellency, and on this we will need your full support. Ladies and gentlemen, we cannot separate the work we are carrying out to build up our region from the impacts of climate change. Its effects are simply too far, too far wide-reaching and far too devastating for us not to consider them across every level of government and at every stage of development. Indeed, as we've said, development finance actually equates to climate finance. If we aspire to achieve sustainable development, we must aspire to achieve resilience. That means infrastructure that can withstand severe climatic events, communities that are protected from rising seas, and sources of food that can sustain our people in the face of changing weather patterns. So while he regrets that he cannot be here to open this conference himself, our Honorable Prime Minister's work to rally the international community to our cause is tied immediately and ultimately to the goals of this conference, as we all look to promote development that is sustainable and resistant to the adverse Im impacts of climate change. Ladies and gentlemen, Your Excellencies, three years ago, when the Honorable Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, first established the Forum for India-Pacific Islands Cooperation, India and the Pacific already enjoyed a solid foundation of development cooperation. But since then, those ties have become even stronger and the flow of goods, services, investment, technical cooperation, and human capital between the Pacific Islands and India has reached record heights, and there is an opportunity to go even further. These exchanges have inspired innovation, driven the adoption of international best practices, and given people from India and from every Pacific Island country the chance to better their lives and access unprecedented opportunities for themselves and their communities. It is therefore our duty over the next few days to build on that success and realize even higher levels of engagement between our countries. India is not only the world's largest democracy, it is home to one of the most dynamic and innovative economies in the world. India is very much a, the, is very much a nation on the move. The world is changing and it has taken notice that India is an economic power, a technological innovator, a center of advanced medicine and science, and an incubator of competitive global businesses. In fact, I was telling the Honorable Minister last night, I just read in the papers a few days ago, an 18-year-old from India has invented the smallest satellite ever, which apparently is about this small. Uh, there is no limit, of course, to the lessons we in the Pacific can take from India's experience, nor to the opportunities for collaboration between our countries throughout the region and together as a united voice in global forums. Fiji's own bond, of course, with India forms a deep and intimate part of our history, as so many Fijians can trace the ancestry back to British India as a result of the tens of thousands of indentured laborers who were brought to Fiji to work in our plantations, mainly in the sugar cane farms. 
Just last year, Your Excellency, we celebrated the 100th anniversary of the arrival of the last indentured laborers from British India to Fiji. The struggle and the stories of all the indentured laborers, or the Girmitiers as they were known, form a vital part of our collective Fijian identity. And we are very proud that we have maintained such a strong friendship with the Indian government to this day. That friendship has played out in very concrete terms. India gave valuable assistance to Fiji in support of our return to parliamentary democracy and the establishment of our first genuine parliamentary democracy of equal votes of equal value. It has taken the form of scholarships for Fijians at Indian institutions and a wide range of cooperation in development and security. And most recently, through our signed MOUs on information technology, renewable energy and youth development, and our partnership in the International Solar Alliance last year. Indeed, Your Excellency, we've just presented the, the Solar Alliance Agreement to our Parliament and is required by our Constitution. Once Parliament uh, approves the ratification, we hope to carry out the ratification in the next few months. Every Fijian values and appreciates India's support to our national development, and in recent years, we're also very glad to see India's engagement increase with our fellow Pacific Island countries as well. In few other areas in the world, does sustainable development bear more importance than in the Pacific? Our natural environment is a source of livelihoods throughout the region, as highlighted earlier on. But beyond that, it is the very lifeblood of our culture, and so it carries deep personal significance for our people. Fiji has placed sustainability at the heart of our approach to development. We want the world to look at Fiji and the Pacific as examples of economic systems where prosperity does not come at the cost of environmental protection. And the experience of setting that model in place holds invaluable lessons for every Pacific nation, for India, and for the entire international community. Through our green growth framework and the formulation of five-year and 20-year national development plans, we are well on our way to making that a reality. We are laying a foundation for Fiji to meet our regional and international commitments to keep our record economic growth inclusive and sustainable. We are on the cusp of tremendous economic advancement in the Pacific. In Fiji, for example, we are recording eight consecutive years of economic growth, and on the back of education revolution, we are fielding the most talented workforce in our history. Throughout our discussions, let us constantly consider how the benefits of progress we make can reach every level of our society, how our development can erase the gaps in equality among our people rather than entrench those inequalities. And we are particularly keen to explore how we can widen the reach of health services and boost agricultural development to that end. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we are honored to host you all in Suva for this conference. We are grateful for the friendship shown to Fiji by every nation represented here today and have every high hopes for all that we are yet to achieve together. Our doors remain open to the region and the world, and we are committed more so than ever to working alongside India and our partners in the Pacific in the months and the years ahead. We look forward to a successful conference and wish you all the very well for the next two days. Thank you very much.